So yesterday, Sony invited me down to their HQ to play with a new camera. I'm not stupid, mate. Obviously, I know what camera this is going to be. Anyway, I turn up. I have a little bit of a play about with this new camera. It's absolutely sick. I go to walk out the door and they say, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't go, James. You forgot the camera. And I was like, what are you on about? I've got my camera in my bag. It's all sweet. And they go, no, 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 no. Take this camera. And that's when I was like... Come again. So, I have got my hands on the Sony A7S Mark III for 24 hours. Bosh. going on you lot i hope you're all sweet i can tell you one bloody thing mate i am bloody sweet because if any of you have been following this channel for like the last four or five years you will know i've been talking about the sony a7s mark III in my bloody sleep and finally this thing is here honestly sony why did you break it to me that I've only got it for a day and it was all last month? If I had known, I would have done... I, would, I don't know what I would have done. I would have burst into flames. Now, back in 2017, when we all thought the Sony A7S Mark III was going to come out, I made a video talking about like what I'd want to see in this camera. <laughs> Turns out I'm a bloody spiritual overlord who knows the future because I got every single spec right. Mate, a little bit scary. I've only been able to play with this thing for 24 hours. I want to shoot something that's actually relevant and shooting my mate Jack, who actually shot my recent short film. I shot him on his BMX. Obviously, it's very action-packed, fast-paced, so we can play about with that 120 frames. And it was also a very, very harsh day for lighting. So that was a really, really nice way to test out the dynamic range, see how the highlights roll off. And man, this camera's juicy. <laughs> By now, you lot already know me too well. I ain't a very in-depth numbers geezer. It ain't my forte. If you want to know about tech specs and all like the numbers and that, go over to Gerald Undone's video. He's done like an entire bloody documentary on this bloody camera. But if you just want to know a little bit more of what it's actually like to use this camera, user experience, I've been using the Sony A7S Mark II for four years. And I want to give you my user... Mate, as if there's a flight... You've got one job, mate. Honestly. I, I don't get rid of the spiders in my office because I think if flies ever come in here, they can sort it out. This fly's gonna do my nut in there. By now we all know the bloody specs and what is actually different and new about this camera compared to like the A7 III, the A7S Mark II. And for me, I was really surprised at what features really kind of caught my attention compared to what features I thought were gonna grab my attention. Now the standout improvement on this camera for me I reckon it's probably the rolling shutter improvements. When I shoot with this camera and when I look back at the... Honestly, I'm going to have to get rid of this fly. Where the fuck is this fly at? I'm going to pounce on this bitch. Keep your eye out, people. Stay calm. When it comes back, it's going to get a straight right, maybe. If so, for me, the biggest standout feature on the A7S Mark III... I'm gonna have to say the rolling shutter improvements. For me, when I look back at the footage, 
It just looks so cinema camera, and in my opinion, that is mainly because of the rolling shutter improvements. Now, don't get me wrong, the 10-bit colour, oh, it's so nice. The roll-off in the highlights, the colour depth, honestly, everything about it just looks so much nicer. I originally thought that the 10-bit colour was going to be the biggest thing for me about this camera, but I'm going to say rolling shutter, 10-bit probably coming in, come in second. Overall, I don't think there is one new feature on this camera that wasn't absolutely needed and that isn't incredible. I, I could literally list off every new feature about this camera and tell you about how good it was. Earlier, I was trying to like write down a few notes to say, like, right, what don't I like about this camera? And you know what? I'll just say what I don't like now because there is only really one thing that I don't like. The AF on button, yeah? It is a lovely button, but could we have just had that as a record button? Like, we've got that lovely record button on the top now, but... That button would have been so nice. However, the good thing is, this camera is <laughs> customizable to the moon and back pretty much. So I've just customized that until I give it back to them tomorrow and they're gonna be like, what has he done to this? So I've just customized the AF on button to hit record. Wish it could have been red. Like if you had to put a little red ring around that, that would have been lovely. However, it's not a massive issue. Just customize it to your record button. And the very last thing that I don't like about this camera, I wish we had shutter angle. We've only got shutter speed. We haven't got shutter angle. However, again, we can mitigate this by just setting our custom profiles on here. Whenever you're at 24p, set your shutter speed to double the amount, then on 60p, then on 120p. So I thought I'd get the two things that I don't necessarily like. Hold on, was there any more? 180 degree shutter, I would have liked. Record button, yep. They're the only two things I don't like about this camera. I feel like they actually just went all out. They just went, look, we're gonna make a camera that, that basically just gives everyone what they want. So let's talk about the dynamic range. I decided to use this camera like midday, really, really harsh light to really see what kind of range we can pick up in them highlights and in the shadows. Now I shot pretty much in 4K all intra, all bloody day, because in my opinion, if I'm gonna use a camera for 24 hours, I wanna see full juice, mate, full pedal to the metal, see what we can get at the highest bit rate, see what we can get and see what we can pull around with the images. So S-Log3 is actually finally usable in a mirrorless camera. Before in 8-bit, you'd play around with S-Log and it just, oh man, it just wasn't bloody nice. And the good thing about the 10-bit S-Log3 is you can do some very, very small little tweaks and your footage looks great. S-Log3 really doesn't need, in my opinion, that much work to make it look amazing. So the 10-bit has actually made such an incredible improvement and the colors. The colors in this thing are so much nicer, so much more accurate than what we've had on previous Sony models. We haven't got the s cinetone that we've got in the FX9, which is an absolutely stunning color profile. However, the colors that come out of this camera are Honestly, just stunning. Skin tones look so much more natural than they did previously, and in my opinion, it, the colors just look so bloody accurate. So, autofocus, you lot know me, I don't ever use autofocus, and the main reason was, one, I didn't have a camera that could actually bloody autofocus. The A7S Mark II, horrendous autofocus, not even worth bloody trying. And I've always kind of been a manual focus shooter. I got really used to doing it. I just feel more confident shooting manually rather than letting the camera do it. However, the autofocus in this camera is pretty stupid. I'm not gonna lie. Even in 120 frames a second, it is so, so tactile, so strong. Everything stays so sharp, even at 1.8. And I personally think that this is gonna be the camera that's actually gonna move me over to actually shooting autofocus. So yeah, man, that's gonna be a bit of a learning curve, kind of like trusting the camera to make sure that it's always sharp. So let's talk about battery life. I only used one and a half batteries pretty much all day today. I got up for sunrise this morning. I didn't exactly have the best conditions. The farmer bloody cut the crop field that I wanted to shoot the day before. What? An Why did you do that, mate? There was no, there was no need. And I've been shooting since this morning and I haven't even used two full batteries, man. So the battery life improvements from the original A7S II are huge. Battery life is very, very similar to the A7 III. So the flip screen. Now, surprisingly, the flip screen isn't something that I really desperately wanted. I actually love just looking at the camera here, even from like a slightly higher angle. I'm not a massive fan of looking over here. However, obviously, because you're bloody watching one, I make YouTube videos, if you didn't know. And on the Sony A7S, I have to use a monitor. I mean, it's all right, it ain't the end of the world, but having a flip screen that I can actually see when I'm shooting, <sighs> godsend, mate. Obviously, this is nothing new. Canon's been doing this with their like ATD for, what, like three or four years? So nothing new, but finally, 
we've got it. Now a very hot topic that I don't really wanna roast another camera brand about is overheating. Now I didn't experience any overheating issues and I shot on a very, very hot day in the UK. I know it's probably hard to imagine the UK being pretty hot. It was 32 degrees today and man, I didn't get one overheating issue. Now I can't say too much about overheating in 120 for long durations. I mean, if you're shooting over an hour at 120 frames a second, I'd be a bit more worried about what the hell you were doing rather than the camera actually overheating. Shoot an interview at 120 frames, I'm sure that'll go just great. We've also got a full-size HDMI port. I absolutely despise the micro HDMI cable slot. This camera is definitely making my Sony FS5 shiver in its boots because full HDMI, 10 bit internal recording, also the fact that we can have power delivery to the camera via the USB-C port. I can shoot my long form interviews, which is what I originally had my Sony FS5 for because the battery life was amazing. You can shoot unlimited amounts of time, so that's amazing for shooting like interviews, long form stuff, but this camera does it all now and I'm a little bit like, oh, but I think it's pretty obvious this camera is completely overtaking something like the FS5 Mark II now. So the card slots, mate. As you'll know, we've got two card slots in this bad boy. We have got two CF Express A slots and we have got two SD slots. And I've been shooting onto the CF Express cards. I've obviously had no problems. They're super fast and they're pretty much made for this camera. And I probably wouldn't recommend getting the, the CFast cards. You obviously can shoot every single... No. I would just get the SD cards and then when you have a job come up that actually requires you to shoot 4K, 120, all I, then go out and buy it. You can pretty much shoot, well you can shoot every other single file format at every frame rate other than that 4K, 120, all I. It's a bit expensive for what you actually need it for so I'd just stick with the SD cards. So onto the very final and in my opinion probably one of the most important elements of this camera is how well do the files out of this camera edit on our workflow stations. So I'll quickly throw up some videos of how well my laptop edits the 4K, 120, all i files. There's a couple of 24, a couple of 60 frames a second stuff in there, but this is all the 4K, all i formats. And from what I was playing about with earlier, it plays back really damn nice. Now, please do take into consideration that I've got an absolute beast of a laptop. This is the Razer Blade 15 Advanced. So before you go out and spend an absolute wedge of money on this camera, work out how well, how easy is the workflow gonna be with these files on your laptop. And to help you do that, I'm gonna leave a link in my description so that you guys can go and download most of the bloody clips, not all of them, because I can't, can't bloody upload about 400 gig. Play about with it, grade it, see what you think before you go and buy this camera, because I do think it's really important that you play about with the files first. I haven't played around with the XAVC-S just yet. I mean, I've only got this for 24 hours, you know. Oh, image stabilization, that is one other thing that we didn't talk about. I couldn't see a massive improvement on the A7S Mark III compared to the A7S Mark II. Now, there is an improvement when you chuck on the active stabilization, which obviously crops into the frame and does a little bit of electronic stabilization. In my opinion, I've never really been a fan of electronic stabilization. I actually just want to stabilize the camera physically instead of digitally. It's just not my cup of tea. I just don't really like the look of it. And although the Sony mirrorless IBIS isn't as good as something like the Canons or the Panasonics, in my opinion, I much, much prefer the IBIS in the Sony cameras. Now, personally, I'm a huge fan of like the handheld kind of shaky look. Now, most cinema cameras don't have any stabilization whatsoever. They just kind of have that nice, organic, shaky handheld movement. And in my opinion, this camera does IBIS the best. You get that handheld shaky movement, but you don't get jitters. The IBIS is just enough to get rid of the jittery hands. It doesn't like when you pan right, it kind of waits and then goes, whoa, go on then, we'll do it 10 minutes later. It literally just is beautiful handheld movement. It just hasn't got that little jittery moments in it. Obviously, if you want more stable shots, there are better image stabilization systems out there. Panasonic, for example, it's absolutely ridiculously good. But in my opinion, it's not the kind of look that I want to get. I want to get a very organic feel. And if I need stabilization, I've got my glide cam, I've got my gimbals. There we go, mate, bosh, no problem. So to wrap up this video, I'm actually gonna swap the cameras round to see how this camera compares to my A7S Mark II in my kind of studio office setup because obviously it's pretty important and I haven't even seen it myself yet. So let's swap these cameras around and um, I can see how well and how nice it looks. And you lot tell me in the comments, 
Does it look a lot better? What do you think? I'm gonna shoot in the 4K 24 frames a second all eye format. So yeah, let's have a look. Bosh, A7S Mark II. What the hell? Why we oh come off it, mate. I'm on bloody manual focus on the lens. <laughs> what a numpty, mate. Right, this isn't good. S log three is no good for this situation. You can see all of the bloody crap that's down there. Right, I need to yeah, let's let's grade this up. Let's crush them blacks. I'm now using the autofocus on the A7S Mark III. <gasps> What's it saying? Right, I am a stiff idiot, mate, because I just had it on animal eye autofocus because I was filming my bloody tortoise earlier. Oh, thank God, we're now on human autofocus. I am a human, right? So the autofocus now should be like much damn better because before it must have thought I looked like a bloody cat or a tortoise, but thank God I'm back to being me. So my overall thoughts on this camera, it definitely met and exceeded my expectations. I didn't think it was gonna be as good as it is. I thought that they were gonna definitely cripple it because of the FX9. I definitely think this is like a bit of a hit on Sony's FX9. I'm not gonna lie, it's an amazing camera and if it was up to me, I would get this over the FX9. I'd get two of these. When the camera first came out and I saw the price tag, I was a bit like, damn, that's bloody expensive. But after actually using it, I think they've hit the nail on the head, mate. I've only used it for the day, you know, so I can't say too much about different scenarios. I haven't shot like an interview or anything like that, but this camera, in my opinion, is the absolute dog's box. Now, one last thing. I don't want like my audience and a load of other people to see a load of YouTubers and people that are quite, in, I'm not influential, but other people that are influential in the scene to rave about this camera and get excited. Obviously, it's very exciting. You. It's a massively influential camera at the moment. Probably the best content creator camera out there, in my opinion, 100%. However, I don't want people that this camera isn't for to get excited as well and go out and spend their money on it when it might not be for them. Just remember people, this camera is just a tool and it just does everything a little bit better than this camera here. Having the Sony a7S Mark III is not gonna make you a better filmmaker. I've always been a really big advocate about like not spending too much money on gear, working and focusing on your filmmaking skills before you actually go out and buy like this really expensive gear that isn't gonna make you a better filmmaker at the end of the day. It's not gonna make your stories better. I hope that you guys can tell from all the content that I make, I try and put story at the top of all of my content. I don't just make cool looking videos anymore just to make them look cool. It's, in my opinion, it's just got no substance. I don't really feel the content, I just see it. The a7 III is still an amazing camera. The Blackmagic is still an amazing camera. There's much cheaper options, but in my opinion, this is the best bloody camera that has come out in, probably, it's the best content creator camera, in my opinion, that's ever come out. So. That's it, I'm just gonna put it right there. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, we can do 16-bit out of this thing, can't we, from the Atomus. I can't wait to see what that 16-bit raw is like, man. And ProRes is such a good codec as well, so that's gonna be bloody brilliant. I've been talking about this camera for three and a half, four years, and um, it's the bollocks. <laughs> right, people, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you uh, as excited as I am about this camera. I'm obviously gonna leave a load of files in the description so that you can download them, play about with them, make some decisions, obviously grade them how you want. But man, it's good times. We've got this camera finally. Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching and I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bosh. Right, old your horses. I'm gonna cut this camera and I'm gonna take us out because I'm pretty sure the sun has just set. So let's see if we can get some nice sunset. I haven't even been outside. Let's go and see what the sunset's saying. Yo, um, yeah, let's, oh crap, I need to cut my audio. If any of you want an absolute banging beat. Guy J, Beast of Sea, Catfish. <sighs> Unbelievable track. Right, let's go. I'm gonna leave the lights on. So, I'm gonna take you lot with me very, very quickly to see. Oh no, I've missed the sunset. <sighs> um, calm down. Tell you what, I'm going to take you with me anyway. Um, let's go. Let me quickly lock up. We have got a lovely field, and I'm hoping that we might even get some colours come through if we're lucky. Bosh. Yo, right. So, 
not quite the sunset I was hoping for. But um, let's see what we can get anyway. Let's see what we can play about with. Because this sky is pretty moody, I'm not going to lie. How nice is that though? Damn. You know what, it's so nice. You know what's something I have noticed? I've noticed that the same exposure from in the office I can pretty much use. Oh man, this flip screen. So nice. I can pretty much use the exact same exposure because S-Log's got so much dynamic range. Um, yeah, man. Right, let's have a little look. Can I make this look good? Is it even worth me messing about with? Probably not. Um, oh man, that is nice though. Okay. Oh man, my audio levels are like high. Okay, so it looks like that was probably an epic fail, but um, the sky is actually quite nice. It's very, very moody, almost as moody as my haircut, but I guess it's time to close out the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And also, Sony, thanks for letting me borrow the camera. <laughs> I've got to be pretty bloody grateful, you know? Um, I just do not want to give it back in the morning, man. Sony, please let me keep it. <laughs> right, people. I keep telling you I'm going to end the video, so I'm going to have to do it right now. Bye. Bye.